Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the in-memory OLTP series. In the previous video we gave you a brief introduction to in-memory OLTP. We discussed a little bit about its architecture, uh, the system requirements and a little bit uh, what you can and what you can do with in-memory OLTP or Hackathon. Uh, in the second video we're going to dive a little bit deeper and we're going to take a look at memory optimized tables. As a matter of quick introduction, uh, my name is Enrico van der Laar. I'm a SQL Server MVP. Uh, I'm also a speaker on various SQL Server events. And you can find me on my blog at uh, www.9.nl. There is a little bit more contact information uh, at the bottom of the slide where you can find my Twitter name and where you can find a link to my YouTube channel. So, memory optimized tables. A large part of the performance increases in in-memory OLTP or Hackathon is in memory optimized tables. Uh, I also sometimes call them in-memory tables. Uh, so when I do that, I'm basically talking about the same thing. Uh, the big feature of memory optimized tables is that reads and writes occur directly into the memory of your SQL Server, or better known as the RAM of your machine. Uh, that sounds a little bit scary because you know everything's in your memory. Uh, what happens when your system reboots or your SQL Server fails? Well, basically uh, nothing because even uh, the memory optimized tables are completely durable. So every transaction is locked uh, inside the transaction log. Uh, I've added a little bit of a remark uh, at that line because there is also an option to add non durable tables, and we'll look at that in the demo. And basically what non-durable tables do is that when your server resets or you have a crash, uh, all the data inside your memory optimized table will be gone. Uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, what we also spoke about in the introduction, uh, a lot of data types are not supported inside memory optimized tables. Uh, a lot of features like clustered indexes or foreign keys uh, are also not supported. So uh, if you want to know what is supported and what isn't, uh, you can take a look at the first video on my YouTube channel or you can uh, uh, browse MSDN with a complete list of everything that is or isn't supported. So first off, we're going to dive a little bit deeper, like I said, into memory optimized tables. And we're going to start with the internals, like how do they work, what makes them tick. Uh, important to know that, even though they're called memory optimized tables, uh, there will still be a couple of files on your file system. In this case, a data and a delta file. A uh, data file uh, contains the rows of your memory optimized table. Uh, or tables, because it can actually hold multiple uh, rows from multiple tables. And the delta files will track the rows that are marked deleted inside the data file. Uh, it will also mark the, the rows that are updated. And the way it does that is it will mark a row as deleted and it will lock the inserted row. So basically an update is just a delete and an insert inside the data file. The data and delta files are always paired together and uh, inside something we call a checkpoint file pair or a CFP. And they are paired together uh, by, by the number of transaction. So uh, when you have transaction number from 1 to 0, uh, sorry, from 1 to 100, uh, there is always a delta file with the same transaction time or transaction number range. So that, that's the key on which they are paired. Um, for the data files, uh, there is no page-like structure for memory optimized tables. Like traditional disk-based tables, uh, data is stored in pages, pages is stored in extent. Uh, there is no such thing like that for a memory optimized table. Uh, data, uh, like the rows, are just stored sequentially inside the data file. So. The way that looks is uh, we can have a data file right here. We can have a row from table 1. Then we can have a row from table 2. And then we can have another row from table 1. And uh, they, they will just uh, get added the way they are inserted. So, like I said, sequentially for one or more memory optimized tables. So, uh, this is 
well, faster than random reads because on your disk system uh, every read and write will be sequential. So this is beneficial to your uh, storage layout. Uh, data files will have a maximum size of 128 megs. Uh, in the case there is more than 60 gigs of RAM and 16 MB when you have less. Um, what happens when a data file is full? Well, basically as soon as a data file is marked as full, a new data file will be created together with a delta file. Like I said, they are paired together in a CFP, so they always need to be created together. And I've added a little animation to show you how that works. So in this case we have a CFP with a data file and a delta file and the numbers at the top are uh, the transaction numbers. So I made it pretty easy. We'll start at zero and we'll have an infinite number because we're still writing to that CFP. Now what happens when we detect that our CFP or our data file is getting full? Uh, in this case it, it has been marked full by transaction number 100 and what will happen is that a new uh, CFP will be created together with a new data file and a new delta file uh, at number transaction 101 uh, until an infinite number. So basically that's just a little bit how this works, how new data files or delta files are created. And the, the most important thing to keep in mind here is that the data and the delta files are always paired together. So when there is a need to add a new data file there will also be created a new delta file in the CFP pair. So, <clears throat> a little bit about the delta files. Uh, like I said, uh, the delta files uh, lock the rows that were deleted inside the data file. Uh, and that is because when a row is actually deleted, uh, it will not be physically removed from the data file. Uh, it will be marked as being deleted and the delta file will keep the information about the row that has been deleted and saves that inside its own delta file. Uh, like I said uh, a little bit earlier, an, an update is just uh, being treated like a delete and an insert. So there is no, uh, there are no update statements inside the delta files, only the delete statements. Uh, after an amount of time, or uh, uh, there, there is a background track that checks uh, when it's need, when it's going to clean up the data, the delta files. Um, they are going to be deleted from the data files and that happens through an operation called a CFP merge. Um, what basically happens is that when multiple data files have empty spaces, so uh, we deleted the data from the data file, uh, empty spaces start to show up inside the data file and what a CFP merge will do is it will merge two data files with empty spaces and uh, fill up those empty spaces again. So that's, that's like a very simple overview of a CFP merge operation. There is a lot of information out there uh, on MSDN how it works so you can just uh, google it and look it up for yourself. Because it is, it is a little bit complex. Um, another part of the internals is the isolation level. Uh, memory optimized tables use uh, versioning, that is uh, that looks a really a, a lot like snapshot isolation. Uh, the big difference between those two is that uh, in a CFP the versions are stored and maintained in line. So in the same file, in the data and the delta files. Uh, snapshot isolation keeps its version store inside the TEMDB, so that's, that's a big difference. Uh, it's also lock and latch free. So there is no locker, readers don't block writers and writers don't block readers. Um, also, uh, we're not going to dive uh, deeper inside uh, the locking and latching uh, uh, methods used in memory optimized tables. Um, so if you want to know a little bit more about that, uh, Klaus Aschenbrenner on his blog sqlpassion.at, if I'm correct, has a couple of articles about that one. So, that's a little bit about the, uh, about the internals, uh, about memory optimized tables. Um, let's take a quick look at how we can create one and how we can create a durable memory optimized table and how we can create a non-durable optimized table. I have a virtual machine here, a SQL Server 2014 uh, without any databases yet as you can see. So the first thing what we're 
going to do is we are going to create a new database called OLTP test. So let's do that. All right, awesome. Let's refresh it a little and here it is. The first thing we need to do when we want to uh, use uh, uh, in-memory OLTP and a memory optimized tables is that we need to add a new file group. And inside that file group will be the place where the data and the delta files uh, will be added. And what we need to do uh, is we, we are going to alter the database and we're going to add a file group, in this case uh, OLTP MO. And this little part of the command is the most important bit. It contains memory optimized data. So that's just the way uh, SQL Server knows that in our database there is a file group that can handle our memory optimized tables. So that's really important. If we didn't add it, it would be just another file group. We don't want that. We also need to add a file to it. To it. And another thing for uh, our memory optimized table is we need to set an option to use the correct isolation level. And in this case we are going to set the isolation level memory optimized elevate to snapshot is on. And what this basically does is that when you have a specific uh, isolation level on your database and you are going to query a memory optimized table, the isolation will automatically be adjusted to the in-memory uh, versioning isolation. So let's do that. All right. So what we've done here is we've created our database, we've added uh, an, uh, an in-memory uh, file group, and we've changed our isolation level. So now the next step will be to create an, an in-memory table. So we're going to use our database, all right here, and we're going to create our table DBO OLTP. It's a normal schema, so our table will be named OLTP. And another important one here is this line. I can draw nice circles here, but all right. Uh, which says with memory optimized is on. So this is a way to indicate that this table will be a memory optimized table. So let's do that. All right, it works. Another little fun thing I want to point out right here is you'll see I've added an address ID, an integer. Uh, it's a primary key, but I told it to be a non-clustered primary key. That's because that's one of the restrictions of memory optimized tables. You can't have clustered indexes, so we'll have to add it as non-clustered. Uh, another thing, this is basically just a copy of a table from the AdventureWorks 2014 uh, database. So I didn't completely create a new table, I just copied some information. And of course, made sure that its data types uh, were compatible with a memory optimized table. All right, let's take a look. To refresh it, here's our OLTP table. And if we take a look at the properties right here, we'll get some information. We'll get to see the table is memory optimized because it's set to true. And we'll have the durability of schema and data. So this indicates that this is a durable memory optimized table, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, let's insert some data. I'm doing this by hand, by the way. Uh, I'm not copying it. I, even though I have the AdventureWorks 2014 uh, tab, uh, database here, I could pretty easily uh, select data from the AdventureWorks database and insert it into our memory optimized table. But that's also another feature that is not supported. Uh, you cannot uh, get information from uh, outside your own database and insert it in your database. It's not supported. Um, let's see how it looks like. And amazingly, we have our information we just inserted, exactly like we would expect. So this is basically the way to uh, to add an in-memory table. Um, important to know, uh, if I would want to change a couple of things to my table, so I wanted to add a column, uh, that's not possible. When you create an in-memory table, you can't alter the table. We would have to drop the table, uh, create the table new again, with the column we would like to add, or the, or the change, and then we have to insert our data again. 
So it's really important that you uh, that you're pretty sure how your table is going to look like when you're going to add it in memory. Um, like I told you in the slides, uh, this table will be fully durable. So the information will be locked in the transaction lock. Um, when our servers stop or restart, uh, everything will still be there, even though all our data resides. These rows are residing inside our memory right now. Uh, there's also an option to create a non-durable memory optimized table, and that's what we're going to do right now. This is basically the, completely the same table, uh, with the same, uh, the same information, the same columns. Uh, big change here. Uh, in the previous table we added this parameter, memory optimized, but we're also adding uh, the durability parameter and it is set to schema only. So this basically means only save uh, the table schema information, so what columns are there, uh, what data types are there. But do not save the data inside the table. So we're going to run this. Alright, it works. And if we refresh this one, we'll see our new table right here. The OLTP underscore ND for non-durable. And if we're going to select the properties on this one, we'll see it's a memory optimized table. And we'll see that the durability is schema only. And in the previous uh, table, which is fully durable, you'll see schema and data. So again, this one will be only store uh, the table information, but not the data inside the table. So let's insert some data again. And let's check how that looks. And as you can see, the information is here. Of course, uh, we'll have a durable, we have a durable and a non-durable table here. So the most fun part would, of course, prove that uh, the durable table will keep its information inside the table and the non-durable table will lose its information. So the way we can do that is, I'm just going to quickly close this one, is we are going to restart our SQL Server service. Alright, yes, we want to do that. I have to wait a little bit now. Alright, awesome. Alright, here's my database, here's my table. And let's check out our durable table first. As you can see, the information I entered is, uh, is right here. So, perfect our information is being saved. Is we, if we are going to query our non-durable table, you'll see there is nothing there. So, you have to be really careful uh, with non-durable tables. If you want to use them, if you want to create them, always keep in mind that when your SQL Server crashes or you'll have a SQL Server failover, the information will be gone. Uh, there's no way to retrieve it, it is just lost. It is outside of memory, it is not recorded in your transaction log, it's completely gone. So be really careful there. So this concludes our, uh, our little demo here. Uh, as always, the scripts uh, I use to create the tables, to create the demos, you can find those in the text article that belongs to this video over at my, uh, my website at www.9.nl. And we've also reached the end of this article. So, uh, I've shown you a little bit uh, of internals memory optimized tables. Uh, we've talked about the data files, we've talked about the delta files, uh, the CFPs, and I gave you a little bit of a demo for how you can create uh, a memory optimized table and create a memory optimized uh, of the in-memory file group, uh, the, uh, how you set the isolation level. So uh, we've kind of covered everything here uh, for memory optimized tables, the basics and the internals. Uh, what we're going to take a look at in the next article of this series will be the hash indexes, which is the new way uh, to index your memory optimized tables. So stay tuned for the next video. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, all the contact information is at the bottom of this slide. Uh, you can uh, watch this video on YouTube. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy it and until next time. Thanks.